Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here and today we are making this adorable and easy, super easy kimono slash cardigan slash cover up slash blouse and the possibilities are endless. It can be pretty much anything and it is a perfect project for any skill level, especially for beginners because this kimono is basically made from rectangles. Now we're still going to make a very basic simple paper pattern so that way it's less likely that you're going to make a mistake and it's going to be easier for you to cut the fabric and navigate your fabric so that way everything comes out really nice and neat. So let's start at the top of my paper and for this line that I'm drawing right now to get the measurement we're going to do the following. Take your measuring tape, stretch it out like so like you see me on the screen. Then it's easier if you do that in front of the mirror so that way you can base where you want your sleeves to start and end. And then you're gonna fold it in half and that's the measurement that you're going to use. Obviously this is quite an approximate measurement since the garment is really loose and flowy. If you're not sure, you can cut it a little bit larger so that way then you can cut away if you want the sleeves to be shorter. For this next pattern line, we will need to take the measurement of the actual length of the garment. Take your measuring tape, place it on the center back of your neckline, and then drop it as low as you would like it to be. Your kimono can be any length that you desire. Next, we will need to take the largest of the following measurements, your full bust, hips, or waist, and then divide it by four. So for me, my largest measurement is going to be hips divided by four, it's nine and a half inches, and that's what I'm marking on my pattern paper right now. Once that mark is done on the top of your line, go ahead and drop a straight line all the way down where the pattern length ends. Now let's mark the back neckline. Take approximately three and a half inches to the right. You can take less or more depending on your preference and then take one inch down. And then with a dash curve line, connect those two points, which will create your back neckline. Now let's mark the width of your sleeve. So on that quarter measurement that you just marked, for me that was nine and a half inches, so we dropped the line. On that line, I will mark about 11 inches. Now 11 inches, as you see, gives me a really nice wide sleeve. You can go for a little bit less, you can go for a little bit more, really depends on you. Just make sure that your sleeve is wide enough so that way you can fit in it without any struggles because we're working with non-stretch fabric here. So for me, that's going to be 11 inches. Now we're gonna do the back and the front of the cardigan bodice all on the same pattern paper. If you would like, you can copy them later so that we have separate front and back. But on this line over here, what you wanna do right now is you want to find the middle. Once you have that point, go ahead and connect that point with the edge of your back neckline. So that is going to be your front neckline curve. Now, because it's going to be a little edgy over here, just make sure that you're smoothing out so that way it looks really nice and organic. And that's pretty much it. The base for your kimono cardigan is ready. So now let's cut it out. Let's move on to cutting fabric, sewing, and details. So here I have copied the back piece of my cardigan on a separate piece of paper. So here you can see that the front and the back are pretty much identical for the exception of the shape of the necklines. I took my fabric, folded it in, I placed the back piece of the cardigan on the fold and the front piece of the cardigan on the fold as well just because it's easier to cut it that way. However, the back piece is going to be cut on the fold as one piece and the front is going to be cut as two separate pieces. When you're cutting your pattern pieces, remember to give about a quarter of an inch to half an inch seam allowance depending on your preference. Now here's an important part about the sleeves. If you wish to have a small hem like this on your sleeves, then go ahead and add your regular seam allowance. If you wish to have a thick hem like I have over here, then you will need to add an extra three and a half inches of the hem to create that really nice thick border. When we're going to be talking about sewing, we'll be using the same four steps over and over again. And those steps are, First, we will place two pieces of fabric right sides together, then we will pin them, then we will stitch them with a straight stitch according to the seam allowance that we use to cut it out, and then we're going to serge it or zigzag the edges or overcast the edges depending on what machine you have 
at home. Now take the back piece, put it right side up, take the two front pieces and put them right sides down, match them at the shoulder seams, pin them in place and stitch them with four steps that we've just discussed. After that, you can also give it a good press with your iron so that way everything is nice and neat and let's move on to the sleeves. Take your two sleeve pieces and before we start working with it, fold them in half and make little notches right there at that half point mark so that way we know where the center of the sleeves is at. Take your cardigan, fold it out like this so that way the right side is facing down and then you see the shoulder seam and take your sleeves and match that notch with the shoulder seam. Once you have that, go ahead and pin it in place and sew it with the same four steps that we've discussed earlier. Once both of your sleeves are attached, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish the seam of the sleeve and the side seam of your cardigan all in one go. Fold your cardigan like so, then pin everything in place and then starting at the beginning of the sleeve you're going to stitch all the way down to the hem of your cardigan and again you're going to repeat the same four steps that we've discussed before you're going to put it in place you're going to stitch it with the straight stitch then you're going to use a serger or a zigzag stitch and then you're going to give it a really good press now here's my side seam and my sleeve seam all in one and done. And while we're here at the ironing board, let's go ahead and take care of the hem of my sleeves. Now, just like I mentioned, you can go for a really, really narrow hem, which is totally fine, but I wanted that really nice and thick border on my sleeves, which means that I need to fold them in like so, about three and a half inches, and then I will use my iron to press them as well. So that way it's really nice and easy for me to stitch them so that way they're nice and neat. When you're ironing your fabric, please make sure that you do it in a correct setting so that way you don't end up with the melty, melty mess. If you're not sure, try it on a scrap piece of fabric first. This time we're only going to be stitching. We're not going to be doing zigzag or serging. I'm just going to put a straight stitch on the very edge of my sleeve so that way it stays intact when I do the other steps a little bit later. Once that is done, you will take your sleeve, you're going to fold that raw edge to the inside about quarter of an inch to half an inch, you will press it again and then you will do exactly the same thing. You're going to use a straight stitch all the way around. We're not going to do a zigzag or overcast or serger, just a straight stitch all the way around. And that's it. Now you have a beautiful border on the sleeve hem. And if you are a member of this channel, then you do have instruction sheets available as a thank you and as a perk of being a member. Now, memberships are paid. However, you do get extras like these instruction sheets for my sewing and drafting tutorials, as well as some of the templates for a smaller DIY projects. Now, if you're wondering what the memberships are all about, you can always click on the join button next to subscribe button and check it out. Now let's talk about the band that is going to act like a collar of your cardigan. For that, take your cardigan and first let's find center back of your cardigan. So take your cardigan, take the back neckline, fold it in half and then place a pin where the middle is at. Then take your measuring tape and start measuring all the way from the bottom hem of the front cardigan all the way to the center of the back neckline. Now we're going to cut two of these bands because we need one for one side and one for the other side as well. These are going to be just long straight strips that I'm going to cut six and a half inches wide and then the length of course is going to be of what we just measured with our measuring tape. Don't forget to add your seam allowances as you cut. Once you have your two strips cut, go ahead and sew only one side of the short ends. Now what we're going to do is we're going to match that seam that we just did on our two long strips with the center back neckline of our cardigan. So go ahead and pin that first and then you're going to continue pinning it from one side all the way down to the front opening of the cardigan on left and then the same way on the right. 
and then you're going to stitch it. It is best if you don't do it all in one go, but rather start at the center back and do it all the way down to one hem and then do it again for the other side. You're gonna do the same steps. You're gonna stitch them first, then you're gonna serge it, and then you're gonna press it nicely as well. After I attached the neck band to my cardigan, I also pressed the seam allowances towards the main body of the cardigan and then I did top stitching on the edge catching that seam allowance so that way it adds extra stability and that seam allowance wouldn't flop around when I wear my cardigan. Alrighty, the final step is the bottom hem of the cardigan. So first, you're going to fold it in quarter of an inch. And I know the fabric here is a little shifty, so it doesn't look like it's straight, but believe me, it is straight. And then you're going to pin it. Then you're going to sew it with a straight stitch only on the very edge of the fabric. Once that is done, you're going to fold it in one more time, another quarter of an inch, and then you're going to stitch in exactly the same place where you put the previous seam. So that way you kind of have, you're gonna have two seams overlapping one another. So it will look like you just have one straight stitch done. And that is going to complete the bottom half of your cardigan and pretty much you're done. Now, if you were wondering why the band around my neckline is folded, this is why. I actually did stitch it down at the center back of my cardigan like so. Thank you so much for watching and I truly hope that you will make something beautiful for yourself as well. And here's another video that I think you will truly enjoy if you love sewing as much as I do. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!